Nice, nice. There's just something about this. A blind hypothesis full of holes, getting plugged up with tons of proven data. It's like, like seeing the missing puzzle pieces fill in all the gaps. As if we're finding Coco's pieces and popping them into the bigger picture one at a time. And let me be clear about this puzzle. If the finished product was a blank slate, this whole thing would have felt like a huge waste. But isn't the image of Coco finally starting to come into view? <laughs> Looks like we'll get to keep on playing with the unique. I bet you're happy about it too, right? So happy. Not really. Come on. No need to be such a wet blanket. Well, I guess I shouldn't expect otherwise from you. You always get results. So it doesn't matter how boring you are. Come here what? and let me pet you. Ugh, Jody. Come on over. Oh. Are we already doing this? <laughs> so what do you think, Chloe? When you look inside the unique in Anima, do you feel Coco's in there? I've written everything I have to say in my report. Oh no, I want to hear it from your mouth. Your honest views, thoughts, Jolie. opinions. Did you feel Coco within Anima? Yes. I have felt that, yes, but... All according to plan. Looks like the Unique is getting closer to Coco. It's only a matter of time before she starts acting like Coco. Like Coco? You can't be. Oh, I am. You were so hostile at first. But now you say you feel Coco. That's all the proof we need. Anima's changing, and that's a fact. Continue the investigation. Okay. <clears throat> We're out of picture books to read. I've been reading the same ones to it, but Anima's starting to get bored of them. I hmm. don't think we can expect new reactions. Hmm. And it never shows interest in briefings or ads, or other textual information like that. In life, Coco was fond of books. No. Perhaps not books, but the stories within. Well, yeah, but... If Anima's tracing the steps of Coco's life, then I can see why Anima wouldn't be interested in the information Coco also was not. But if Anima's interested in what Coco was, it'd like the novels and literature in her room. The Unique only shows interest in picture books. Hmm. If I read her text-based things like novels... Its intelligence isn't there yet! Body aside, Let's hypothesize that its brain and mental development are still in progress. Every living being learns as it grows. Once it learns how to read and write, just imagine! It'll probably start devouring books, every last one of them in that room. Figuratively. I guess. <sighs> but that's in the future. Let's focus on the present. If it wants simpler stories that even a toddler can understand. All we need to do is provide them. I've got something perfect in mind. It's a bit of an antique. A program from 200 years ago. Huh? Ta-da! A story generator. <laughs> okay. Making stories <laughs> is easy. Just toss some code and elements together, and there you go. Smart. Problem is, they won't be as good as human-written stuff. Yeah. They're plastic stories. Devoid of the life and background of the other. But should be enough to please a dumb kid, right? And it's got text to speech. <laughs> Labor saving. If it has text to speech, do you really need me around? Hey there, Chloe. Sup? Still here. I thought the day's investigation was over. Ah, oh, still doing your report. Sorry. Say, you look a little pale. Have you been sleeping? I've been reading fucking books to a kid. <laughs> you haven't been sleeping, have you, Chloe? Like, I was just talking to Alba about this, but you haven't really been all there during practice, have you? 
Hey, Professor Julie, how long is this gonna last? This? This weird study. Like, the unique's gonna keep getting more human, right? Man, that's gross. I mean, it's a meteora, and it's the one that, that ate Coco. And you're making her best friend take care of it, offering up all her dearest memories. And now it's starting to act more and more like Coco? Come on. She may be a designed, but there's no way she'd be able to sleep easy after all that. Come on, Professor. Does it have to be Chloe? Why are you putting her through all this cruel junk? What if something happens, you know? Something? What? Is Chloe going to get gobbled up? Now that <laughs> would be curious. How would the unique transform after absorbing Chloe? I wait, 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 wait. Julie? <laughs> would Anima become Chloe? Would it stay Coco? Oh, <laughs> maybe it become Coloco. Coloco. <laughs> now you listen here. You're talking about Chloe and... Quit it, Yamato. The professor has her reasons. But still, this is ridiculous. It's fine, Yamato. I'm fine. Chloe. That concludes my report. I will take my leave. B -b -b Bye. Hey, Chloe. You happen to forget the story generator. I'll send it to you later. So have fun with story time. <laughs> okay. Hey, Chloe. You haven't forgotten, right? What the unique did to Coco? It ate her. I know. We know, we know. Forget who she is? There's no way I could. The unique consumed Coco. It's Coco's mortal enemy. Yet there's something I just can't deny. Why is Anima so similar to Coco? Why does Anima only open up to me? Did Coco truly die? Is she still alive inside Anima? I can't deny the weakness that lingers within me. I just can't. And then the rabbit said, With these legs of mine, I can bound over any mountain in a single leap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like the rabbit? We can change stories then. A frog. A... Grasshopper? <laughs> it's not Dungeons Dragons, like... What does Anima even like? No preferences, huh? Hell. This program's completely useless. All the characters are extinct animals. You probably can't even imagine these things. You've never seen a rabbit. No. Even if Anima could imagine this rabbit's adventures, if Anima were Coco, she wouldn't you care. read for me, Chloe. Oh. I want to hear the story you read, not some machine's flavorless narration. Oh, okay. Put your feelings into your voice. Coco wouldn't be interested in a story read by a machine. I don't have anything I can read to you. Nothing you'd be interested in, anyway. Hmm? Are you telling me to tell you a story? Of course I'm gonna speak. Something you know about... humans, then? I can't talk about normal humans, though. All I can tell you about are... well, designed humans. Hmm. Dolls made in humanity's image. That's a good idea. <laughs> now, as a designed human, Basically, I wasn't born naturally. I was made with a purpose in mind. Like a doll. Well, you don't know what a doll is. I was made in human form, but I'm not like them. I'm made of tougher stuff for the purpose of riding a robot to fight monsters that come from the sky. She, <laughs> that doll girl, she, she was brilliant from a young age. She grew. She met the adults' expectations. She defeated monster after monster. The people of the city were grateful. They heaped praise on her. Yet, she knew. She knew they were afraid of her. 
as she was a doll. As an artificially created being, she had no parents, no family. She had always been alone. Yet, she never felt lonely. Not at all. Because this doll was born to fight. <laughs> Yet one day, there was a girl who called her a liar. The girl couldn't walk. She couldn't see. Her skin was porcelain. And she seemed like she would shatter if you pushed her too hard. Yet, she knew so much and had an abundant sensibility that others did not. Sensibility. The ability to read other people's hearts, you could say. She was fragile because she understood others too well. She noticed the doll's loneliness and held her hand tight, not letting her escape. And she gave the doll the words she wished to hear the most, not cool. Or amazing. Hmm. Welcome back, Chloe. The girl in the wheelchair planted flowers. She let bloom so many flowers, coloring our heroine's world. She was no <laughs> longer alone. It was just the two of them in a colorful world. She thought they would be there forever. Yet, one day, Suddenly, oh, them. the girl in the wheelchair disappeared. She wondered why. The doll was blunt and awkward. Did the girl get tired of her? The girl in the wheelchair was gone. She was alone again. Yet, she thought she would be fine. She'd lived alone this whole time. She would simply return to her old life. She would just return to normalcy, or so she thought. She could not return to her strong self, and she wondered why. Confusion ensued, because she knew of her own weakness, knew of a world of color. It was all because of the girl in the wheelchair. She wanted to tell her what for, tell her to take responsibility. She barged into my life broke me and left without a word i hate her i hate that girl so much you're changing the narrative chloe no matter what you do you'll always be a design forever alone and hated by all oh damn being born in this world you can't stop being yourself not even for a second so you know you can cry you can be lonely. You can be weak. No matter what anyone says about you, there's no changing what you are to me. You're my dearest, Chloe. Mm. And she still wanted, still yearned for, that irreplaceable time. And that burned her up inside. She put up a strong front. I won't do what you tell me, she'd say. But she was in so much pain, she could hardly breathe. She wanted to cry out and wail, yet the person who would allow her that was no longer with her. Then, pretending to be all right in a colorless world without her, she... <laughs> uh, are you still trying to eat me? Um, um, um. <laughs> no. I think she is way different than she used to be. Don't tell me you're trying to soothe me. You've got to be freaking kidding me. That's just like... <laughs> so I'll make a promise to you too. Whenever you're crying... I'll come running and sing you a lullaby. Ah. The doors open? What doors? Hmm. Oh, shit. Are you Coco? <laughs> I think we're going to be fine.
What? I've heard this sound before. I remember it clearly. Weakly. Fragile. Soft. The gentle sound that captivated my heart. The one this world bereft of color nearly had me forget. It was the sound of Coco. Hmm? What? Get off. What are you Let doing? Me go. <laughs> Chloe, I'm glad you found me. The world started to regain its color. I couldn't refuse this numbness. This pain. Never leave my side. Oh shit. How I think? could I? So... I refuse her here. And I'll be all alone again, just like when Coco abandoned me Ugh. to go to the. Surface. I don't think it's the actual ending. Who should go first? Actually, something's wrong. And that concludes or this not. week's report. <laughs> hmm, a whole week and no changes, huh? Guess that's our limit. Sounds like it's about time to take our girl apart. <laughs> take her apart? Yeah. Cut little anima up and see what's inside. Since it doesn't look like we'll see any more cocoa elements pop up from here on out, I'm saying it's time to move on to dissection. <gasps> I tried putting in all the pieces, but in the end, we didn't have a picture. It was just a blank puzzle after all. Tragedy of the century. Or more like... Coco's silhouette is slightly there, but nothing to hang on your wall, you know? Anyway, I've had my fun with it. We're moving on to the next phase of the study. It's dissecting time! <laughs> Dissection! No. Wait. She's still inside. Coco's still. Hmm? Did anyone ask? For your opinion <clears throat> but well you do sound awfully confident go ahead let's hear your evidence the unique it doesn't attack me it still attacks whatever enters its room but not me i can even touch it and i can communicate with it better than any wait Chloe, you actually touched Anima? Hmm? Why would you do something so dangerous? Of course it's going to like the Keeper best that stays with it the most. Or maybe it felt kin with you as another non-human with human form. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you're the one feeling kin with Anima. Hmm. It's the sound of Anima's pulse. Mmm, pulse? Its heartbeat was the same. There's no mistaking Ooh. it. It was Coco's pulse. Ha! <laughs> Talk about your unreliable testimony. When'd your ears get that good? Coco's the only heartbeat I know by heart. It's a sound I know very well. <laughs> like you could interpret such a delicate rhythm. But Coco is inside Anima. I know it. Please, just believe me. <laughs> I started this science gig precisely because I can't believe in anything. If you can definitively prove that Coco's inside, we can keep the investigation going. I don't know how. But delusions, overconfident proclamations, you can't call that proof by any stretch. Hmm. <sighs> So, we're bringing Anima's investigation to a close. Good job, everyone. You can go back to your normal duties tomorrow. You've got to be kidding me. You're the one who made me take care of Anima. You told me to look for Coco in the meteora that ate her. And I finally found a glint of light. Coco's there. She's inside of Anima. We're so close. We're so close, and now you want me to just let Anima die? That's exactly what I'm saying, Chloe. Got a problem? Yes? You bet I do. I'm sick of this. 
I'm sick of being a slave to your whims! Chloe! I know how you feel, but you've got to calm down. It's unlike you to shout. You must be tired after how long this investigation has gone. Let me take you home? Get out of my way! I'm not done talking. There's nothing more to say, idiot. Cool off. We're going back. Shut the fuck up! Can I assume we have permission, Professor? We'll walk her back home. Hmm. There's nothing more disgusting than having a doll talk back to you. Take her out of my sight before I take her out of this world. Ugh. Hmm. Hmm. Like, seriously? Yelling and screaming at the professor? You'd be lucky to get house arrest. Professor Julie might actually destroy you. First, I've heard you went into the Unique's room, though. Like, alone? What if it ate you? Anima wouldn't. How can you say that for sure? Chloe, you're strange lately. Pale? Lacking composure? I think you should rest a little, at least. We'll try to get the Anima investigation extended, okay? Personally, I'm fine with ending it. I mean, the Unique's the reason Chloe's suffering. We should have gotten rid of it from the start. A Meteora copying Coco? That's just gross. I mean, th exactly the same thing that happened in the other ending, so... No, Anima's not copying her. I feel Coco in it. I know it. I don't think this ending would... Isn't that just what you want to think? Makes sense if Anima would actually not a good path to go with. Quit it, Yamato. Chloe, you should just go home and rest for today. Let's go, okay? I'll walk you there. <sighs> mm. I don't know, see. How long are you going to follow me? All the way home, I suppose. That's what we told the professor. So, you're keeping watch on me then? <laughs> Looks like we've gotten on your bad side, huh? Like, I'll be real. We're worried about you. The second we take our eyes off you, you're gonna visit the Unique, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Do you really think I can just sit around? When's the dissection going to begin? Wake up already, Chloe! Look, sure, it looks like Coco, but that doesn't change the fact that it's a Meteora, does it? It just looks like that to get your guard down so it can gobble you up! You're wrong. Anima doesn't have the slightest desire to eat me. Anima's just trying to communicate with me by touching me. It used touch because it can't speak. Mm. That's all. You may only see Anima as a sample to be studied, but it has emotions. It has preferences. Anima smiles like Coco does. Why can't you see that? Why won't you listen to me? We were the ones pushing Anima away in fear when all it ever did was offer its hand. If you can't see that, that's fine. Enough. <laughs> hey, Chloe! Oh my god, another one too. <laughs> Who do you think you are, ignoring my show? Out of my way. I'm not in the mood. Hey, you know, I thought I hadn't seen you around for a while. But look at you! You look awful. Ragged. You're so pale. Did Anima do something? Ugh, I told you to stay away from it. Stop yapping in my ears. Leave me alone. Hmm. Wait a second. Chloe! You're hurt? Hurt? Seriously, Chloe? It's none of your business. What do you mean? I told you to leave me alone. Hey, hang on. We're not done here yet. Is that a bite from Anima? Despite your regenerative powers? Oh, okay. If it hasn't fully recovered, does that mean it's... that deep a wound? It's nothing. Nothing? After you got savagely attacked? There's no way that's nothing. It wasn't an attack. Anima didn't have any hostility. Chloe, something's gotten into you. You're the victim here. Sorry, Chloe, but I can't let this slide. Professor Julie's decision is probably right. But like, if she bit me, then if it didn't heal, that's a good proof for Julie, right? 
We can't let the investigation continue. But something's up. I'll report to the professor and hear her judgment. Okay, yeah. I told you that's not necessary. Anima's not dangerous. That's not our call, Chloe. You should present your case. Come on. Let's go back to the lab. Yeah, I think Julie would uh, change her mind if she heard that. Don't touch me. I'm not going. Mm -mm. Chloe, no, no, go. what's gotten into you? Why are you defending that meteora so much? Have you lost your mind? I'm perfectly enough, you two. There's no point in yelling at Chloe. She knows what's going on. Like you said it yourself, right? Now you're defending me. That's what the side are you on? That ate Coco. I mean, it might eat you too, right? Just leave me alone. Ugh. 